Mr Owen, and it's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship. And I pay tribute to the Honourable Member for Glenthrope for calling this debate and all of the contributions. It is clear this is one issue that unites all sides of the House, that we want to do the very best for those receiving parents who have taken on the primary responsibility of the childcare and are having to battle to get the support that they rightly should be getting. And remember, the Child Maintenance Service is a service of last resort. We would hope, we would all hope, wherever possible, parents can have amicable arrangements that don't necessarily need our involvement and have no impact on the children. But where that cannot be the case, because either one or both of the parents are in dispute on what their responsibility should be, then absolutely the Child Maintenance Service is there to provide support. And I want to make it very clear that all of the cases raised show why it is such an important area where we've brought significant new regulations, significant new powers forward, and I will go through some of those processes. But I would repeat, a lot of those cases raised are legacy cases that uh, will have been initially dealt with under the old rules and why we brought forward the rules I'm going to go and talk about. There is still much more to do. It's something that we are working very closely with stakeholders, including organisations like Gingerbread, but also on the other side, uh, families need fathers as well, can provide constructive and helpful feedback. So it is getting that balance for both sides. But just to put this into context, there are around 700,000 cases a year. We, get a re we record 2,500 complaints a year, which is less than half a percent, but we still want to go further. We are absolutely focused on improving the customer experience. And I, I pay tribute to my honourable friend for Sterling, who I know has been really proactive in this area and uh, a commitment I want to make. I must stress, I'm not actually the minister responsible for child maintenance. I used to be. Uh, so I've got a great deal of interest in this area, both as a constituency MP who, who raises cases uh, and having uh, served that uh, when I had a different role within DWP. But everything is, will be passed on to the Minister. But uh, I would like my honourable friend to actually meet with the operations team because there were some concerning operation issues that were raised. Uh, that customer experiences are shared and raised to the senior management team. We do work with stakeholders. And um, we also work with key organisations like Women's Aid, who've done a huge amount to improve our ability to identify either victims of domestic abuse or potential victims of domestic abuse, and then we can tailor the service accordingly. Now, the initial contact with the service is, is with CM Options. You can't just automatically, you have to have a conversation. That conversation will explain all of the options available to you. Uh, and for, uh, I'll just make a bit of progress on your some interventions. Uh, for many people, actually, they don't wish to use us. They just want to have an amicable arrangement, but they would like some guidance on a starting point for those discussions. So we can provide that information. We can signpost to other organisations, and then that can open the gateway to look at organisations like uh, looking at the options like direct payments or click and collect. Yes. Did you drop? friend to meet with the operations team. I wonder if that offer is open to all of us who've participated in this debate. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair point. And, and those who are particularly interested in the operations side, then I'm sure uh, the team would be very uh, happy to meet. So on to direct payment. Um, this is where we have advised what the uh, financial contribution should be and the parents uh, set out to try and do that without using us. And a number of people have highlighted how that can then break down. And the problem with that is then that the debts mount up, and the bigger the debts, the bigger the problem to then get that fixed. So we rightly have, have tried to be more proactive. So not only is there the annual review, but we now text the receiving parents proactively to ask, are there any issues? And if there are any issues, to contact us immediately. So we can escalate either then ultimately enforcement or to move them on to the click and pay service and uh, last year we saw or the last quarter 9,000 people did move from direct pay to collect and pay as we nudge as quickly as possible uh, a proactive level of, of support on collect and pay um, I, I know the shadow minister talked about 67 percent or 33 percent wasn't being collected well actually 67 percent was the last published figure in June 19 it's up from 62 percent the previous year and that's been a uh, a long-standing improvement. The amount unpaid at June 19 was 18.5 million, um, which is down from 22 million. It's still 18.5 million too much, but the, we are heading 
in the right direction. And that is through a combination of better training of our frontline staff so they can explain to both the receiving parent and the paying parent options and potential uh, punishments if they don't engage. It is better enforcement, which I'm coming on to, and it's the, the regulations that we have passed to strengthen our ability to investigate and to enforce. And with our enforcement team, and rightly, uh, MPs have raised areas where enforcement hadn't been quick enough. I think the Honourable Member for East Ham set out the exact reasons why we needed these regulations that we brought in um, uh, over the last 12 months, two separate sets of regulations. And that was listening to cases like that, learning the lessons and seeing what was missing that stopped us taking the action that we would all support. Underlined by the fact you've got to act much quicker. The sooner we can act, the easier it is to remedy. We are also benefiting from having the ability to now access more real-time information from HMRC, that we've strengthened our ability with the deduction orders where we will directly take from people's salaries and also reminding employers, because quite often those employees will say to their employer who's their friend, oh, my other half's being unreasonable, it'd be really helpful if you help me fudge this. Well, we are now using legal powers to remind employers that they will be liable. And unsurprisingly, um, that's now gone up to 48,000 in the last quarter, collecting about 26 million, compared to the same quarter last year, it was 31,300, collecting 19 million. Uh, and uh, also, we are proactively highlighting success stories in the media, because that doesn't half um, um, focus people's mind. But the most significant change is the introduction of the Financial Investigations Unit. In the past, where there were lifestyle queries raised, we would in effect rely on HMRC to go and investigate. They had finite resources. Uh, you know, if it was a Premier League footballer who was clearly defrauding them of a huge amount of tax, they were very quick to go and look at that. But for many of the cases highlighted, whilst it's a, a significant amount of money to those children, it might not have been enough to prioritise HMRC. The Financial Investigations Unit, which is solely ours, does not look at the value of money because it's as important to every single parent regardless and it will chase. And these are highly trained ex-police officers and tax inspectors with fiscal investigation experience. And they focus on these sorts of cases to go and deep dive using evidence. We initially recruited 30 in 2017, went up to 50 in 2018, 80 in 2019, and they are making a significant difference. About 4,000 cases at the moment are being investigated. Those numbers will increase. As we gain evidence, it's a double win because we will share that with HMRC and then they can go and chase any tax avoidance that's gone through. And very quickly, Mr Owen, the new regulations that we've passed that will help is the ability to now seize people's passports. In the past, we used driving licence. When they went to court, they would then not unreasonably say, well, you can take my driving licence, I then won't be able to earn any money, and I won't be able to pay any more money. The ability to lose their summer holiday doesn't half-focus minds. And having sent out thousands of, over a 1,000 warning letters... Uh, there is high engagement at that point. Accessing joint and business accounts, a clever trick of sole employed people to go and hide it, that now we have powers, and, and actually be able to look at assets. So again, where self-employed people are transferring what would be wages into assets, we can now take a normal 8% of those assets and collect it. Easier to access information uh, uh, from pension providers, and we will be doing more joint work with HMRC. And I would gently remind some of the colleagues who've been calling for these extra powers, vote for them next time, because some members did vote against them. We have to put those uh, receiving parents first. I'm grateful to the Minister.